Hi folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I just finished cutting the grass. A little sweaty, but looks nice out here now. So let's uh, let's have a fruit tree update. Well, it looks a little different now with most of the fruit trees having budded and put on some leaves. They look pretty pathetic up until about a month ago when they started to put on some leaves and some of them were slower than others. I'm practicing uh, what's called backyard orchard culture and that's a practice that I believe was started by Dave Wilson's nursery. If not started, at least Dave Wilson's nursery has done a lot of research into it and uh, made lots of headway in backyard orchard culture. And um, that's a method by which we keep our trees small. We plant them close together, sometimes two or three trees in the same hole. And you maintain that smallness by pruning. And you keep the pruning, uh, you do uh, pruning for fruit in the winter, you do summer pruning to stunt growth. And you can grow fruit trees, keep them small, and by keeping them small, well maybe you won't get 400 pounds of fruit, but you'll get enough fruit for yourself and your family. And with small trees, you can have more variety. So I wanted to show you around. This is what I would consider uh, going into spring number three of my backyard orchard because I officially start to count with my apple trees and they went in three years ago in the spring. Let me show you around all my fruit trees. There's the latest acquisition. I've got two apple trees here. These are both King David variety. I wanted a King David variety, but the one that my, my uh, son had that I was going to use as grafting stock, it died. Couldn't take the heat. And uh, wasn't really well cared for. But that, that will be well cared for. King David is, I'm looking forward to those apples. It's supposed to be a delicious variety. Well, let's start with the stone fruits. Here we have a tropic gold apricot tree. This went in on New Year's Day, basically. <clears throat> and uh, it was a bare root tree. Showed you how to plant a bare root tree. And uh, yeah, it popped real quick and it's looking good. Apricot, do your research. You can, there are varieties of these stone fruits that will grow in these subtropical areas. And this particular apricot variety is one of them. Next to it, we have a plum tree. This plum tree is actually three years old. And uh, I've been keeping it this size. I don't want it any bigger than that. I expected fruit this year. <coughs> haven't seen any flowers yet or blossoms, so maybe maybe we'll have to wait another year. Some fruit trees take a few years to get going, and some get going right away. Here's a peach tree. This one's two years old, and there was a peach on this one earlier, but it dropped it. So it's uh, yeah, it was a premature little peach. This tree's two years old. I don't expect fruit on it this year. I was uh, surprised to see that peach. But yeah, what I'm doing is I'm growing these stone fruits and I'm keeping them about this. Let me back up and you can get a good look at this guy. That's about the size that I want. Pay no mind to the junk on the side of the house. That's about the size we're going to keep these trees. I showed you in our videos how we bought these trees, at least this one I bought at the uh, big box store and it was grown straight up on a central leader and this thing was about six feet tall and we chopped it down to a knee high and we selected four, <coughs> excuse me, we selected four main scaffold branches and those were the best ones we could find. It's doing great. We wanted that open center goblet shape. This peach over here is a good example of what we wanted. We chopped this peach down as well and it's growing like, like a champ. You see when we bought it, it was only about that big around. Temporarily growing in this container are these two pawpaw trees. These pawpaw trees will be planted in the uh, come in the next in the next spring. <laughs> Let me get it right. I have to acquire a second variety for these to fruit. You need a genetically distinct second variety to be a pollinator with these pawpaw trees, and they're not shipping them right now. They only ship these pawpaw trees when they're dormant. So I'm going to have to wait another season. Just let these guys grow in this pot for a while. But yeah, I'm going to try to grow pawpaws. Not supposed to be able to grow them here in zone 9. But uh, we're going to try. Haven't given anybody a fig update in a long time. And somebody said, my figs. Who was it? One of my regular commenters said, no, you're not moving your figs around that much. Um, I had mentioned that I moved them around. But you can see 
Some of them are in the same place they always were, and there's gaps because a lot of them died. A lot of them died back and I've had to come in and trim back to living wood. This one I, I really liked. You can see it survived the freeze and it's coming back, but it's probably going to be stunted this year. Give me no fruit this year. Just going to kind of recover from the freeze. That's kind of how figs work. If they get knocked back, they uh, sometimes will take a year to recover. This fig over here, I thought also, I need to wait. This is one of my favorites, a Ronde de Bordeaux. But if you look carefully, there's green right there. Can you see that? There's green coming out there. There's green coming out here. And there's, of course, growth from the root. So some of this is dead, but we're going to let the tree show us where it's going to grow back before we take it down. We could chop it all the way down to, to the graft union right here. And uh, actually, that's not a graft. I started this from a cutting. That's the original cutting that swelled. But we could take it all the way down to the to a stump and it would grow back just fine. Figs do that. So out of about 25 to 40 varieties of figs over the years, I'm down to what? One, two, three, four, five fig trees. And I've got one in the front yard that's putting on fruit that's in the ground. And most of these fig varieties back here are the varieties I don't even like. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Got my key lime tree here. We potted this up this spring. These are new to me, this and this. That's a Persian lime. They're looking a little pest riddled. I don't know what that's about. I know that the leaf miners are going to find these and they already have leaf miners getting citrus around here no matter what you do. And uh, well, that's, you know, it looks ugly, but the tree can handle it. Now I got my uh, Kishu mandarin here. It's loaded with baby fruits. Tons and tons of them. This took last year off, but it looks like we're going to get a bumper crop this year. Tons of little fruits. Hopefully it doesn't drop them all. And this is actually, this is a uh, this is the Persian lime, the new Persian lime. That is my Sanguinelli blood orange, and it's got some new fruits on it. So anyway, I've got these citrus trees back here, and I love citrus. Here's the plan. I'm going to take some of this wood next year, because let me show you Lucy. Come on, Phoebe, let's go look at Lucy. Lucy is my, oh, I don't know how old Lucy is, but I've got many videos of Lucy being cut back, Lucy during the freeze, Lucy eight feet tall with tons of lemons. Lucy is growing back from the epic freeze and all this growth is Meyer lemon growth from above the graft union. But look at, look how, look how skinny and thin it is. I need to give this another year of growth before I can do what I plan to do, which is to take cuttings off of all my citrus and graft onto that awesome rootstock. That awesome rootstock will grow me all kinds of citrus. And all that growth right there that you see, that green growth, that's just about a month and a half's worth of growth after, after the freeze. The freeze happened on uh, around Christmas last year, and it took a while, but uh, Lucy showed us where she was alive. We covered that much of Lucy with towels and wrapped her in Christmas lights. So, yeah, Lucy the lemon tree, Meyer lemon tree, perennial fruits. This is a goji berry, and it's kind of just taken over its little spot there. It escaped from a pot. It got knocked back in the freeze several times, but it keeps coming back, so I'm going to leave it there and just kind of weed whack around it and hope we get some goji berries. It's right here next to my uh, blackberries, and my blackberries have given me fruit last year for the first time, and we have a video showing you how to take care of these, and it looks like we're going to get a lot of good fruit this year, too. Got some blossoms coming in. Yeah, lots of blossoms forming. So we'll get some fruit this year. And when that gets a little big, bit bigger and fills out this container, I'm going to uh, hopefully get three sets of canes about like that. We'll have a lot of fruit. Yeah, blackberries, real nice. So this is kind of the berry station. It wasn't too long ago that I had a video showing you how to plant these. This is a uh, black currant. Actually, that one's a white currant, I think. Yep, that's a black currant. <laughs> it was a dead twig when it arrived. Look at it. It's already got blossoms 
I don't know if I'm I don't know about these I've never grown them um, will it fruit on those blossoms I guess we'll see here's the white currant over here by the wind whipped basil but they popped doing just fine this will be the permanent home of this wonderful berry I love currant juice back to the fruit deck I do have two more currants black currant and a white currant these are growing in pots I'm gonna see if you can grow those in pots what I didn't show you was my Barbados cherry sometimes known around the south as a southern cherry it's actually not a cherry it is a, a cherry like fruit that's supposed to be one of the highest in vitamin C of all the fruits now I haven't seen any fruit from this tree so I don't know what to look for in terms of blossoms or signs that it's going to fruit but it should do just fine there you don't have to prune these much I just prune it to keep it about that size and we'll see if we get some fruit from it if you've been around my channel for any length of time you've seen my muscadines man I love these muscadine grapes I grew them from bare root little twigs and this is what year five or six they got their prune and you can see they're waking up and you can already see all those little things right there I think you can see if it'll focus those little things right there are future grapes so we're gonna have a good harvest on this one I can already tell I have a whole playlist on muscadine grapes and this is what I would call a micro vineyard I have three varieties four vines back here and uh, they get pretty gnarly that one's about a inch and a half in diameter it shed its bark that's freeze damage but it'll it'll pop back yeah these vines they're crazy they grow like crazy and when you prune them you get a big mess of sticks these will be used to make mulch but uh, muscadines I get 50 pounds of grapes off of these vines and I'm in a tiny little suburban backyard if I can do this you can do it now for the stars of the show my favorite fruit trees so far they are in their third year and they are apple trees look at my apple trees with little apples on them look at that this is an Anna variety Anna is a variety developed in Israel we're going to thin this is its first year to fruit so we don't expect much from the fruit but it is year three we planted these as a bare root stock with a one inch long scion wood grafted on the top this first year we wanted that scion wood to grow I'm gonna to have to trim that we wanted that scion wood to grow tall the second year we notched to get our branches to force out and then we bent them down with well, that one's bending down all on its own we bent them down with string like this which now we could take off because the apples are weighing it down and what that does is that encourages growth of fruiting spurs on the apple wood the apple naturally wants to grow like this guy here which I haven't been down this is a late variety so it hasn't woke up yet but see how that wants to grow at a high angle it's not good for the for the tree it's not good for this junction here for this joint it, it makes for a weaker joint so what I need to do and I started to do is bend those fruiting branches outward and tie them down kinda like this one here this one is a golden dorset and you can see we've got golden dorset apples coming on right there right there aren't those beautiful look at that apples in the subtropics it's possible Cuffle Creek Nursery publishes a list of varieties that do well in the subtropics and you have to pay attention when you buy apple trees because you've got to have pollinators that are matched to the variety that you're buying otherwise you'll just have a tree with lots of leaves this is shell of Alabama it's got baby apples on it too these three shell of Alabama this one here golden dorset that one there and the Anna way over there those three will pollinate one another they're the earliest apples I mean you can see it's you know almost April and we've got apples that will be ripe in the summer rather than the fall yeah my apple trees they make me so happy so there's my four apple trees there I've got this one over here which is a Fuji we don't expect fruit on Fuji for five to seven years 
but there it is. So this branch will train. I'm going to have to notch this to get some more branches because we need branches coming out in different directions. And so far, my Fuji is still just a whip, basically. That's what the other apple trees looked like after their first year of growth. Just a straight shot all the way up. So we're going to have to do some notching because one branch ain't going to cut it. So take a look around. I live on a one quarter acre plot and my house takes up most of it. There's my grapes over there. There's my fig deck with some fig trees and my patio with some citrus. Yard's not that big. And look at all the fruit trees I'm growing. You can do this too. Berries, fruit. I'm putting in a pomegranate tree too once it arrives this week. Now you can do this. Lots and lots of fruit. So there's a little tour of my backyard orchard, my uh, mini orchard, all the fruit that I'm growing. And uh, you know, it just really excites me because um, the best time to plant a tree was about five years ago. That's what they say, right? Um, but, and that's pretty much what we did. We started planting trees. It's a long-term commitment. It's a long-term process. But once you start getting that fruit, oh, it's so rewarding. When my blackberries came in last year for the first time in any numbers, I was so happy. And uh, now I'm seeing my apples come in. And we're going to have some apples this year that we grew ourselves. My citrus always does great. I love coming out and harvesting good mandarin oranges or having one for breakfast. Uh, blood oranges. I just love it. I've got some limes now. We used to harvest tons of lemons off of Lucy the lemon tree who's going to be harvested again someday because she's growing back. I'm looking forward to all these berries and looking for places to plug in more trees. I have two spots in my yard where I can plug in trees and one of them is going to be this King David apple tree right behind me and I think I'm going to try a pomegranate. I, I've got to do some research on the pomegranate. The pomegranate was kind of a uh, a, uh, a, well, it's a gift. It's a gift from one of the companies I'm affiliated with, and they, they're sending it over to me, and, and I'm going to plug that in, see, either in a pot or in the ground. i got to figure out how to grow them. I don't really know yet, so I'll learn, I'll do, and then you can learn along with me. So, yeah, man, get, get you some perennials, get some fruits, get some berries, and grow them and enjoy them. They're, they're so good for you and so rewarding. Hope you enjoyed the little look around. I hope you follow us. If you are interested in this backyard orchard culture, I have a playlist and I'll link it right up there if you're interested in finding out uh, what to do when you get your new tree. You got to chop it off. You got to lop it. You got to do certain things to it. What to do in the second year. What to do when it starts to grow and get big, but you're supposed to keep it small. How to prune, how to, how to take care of your trees. I've got a playlist that has videos that shows every step of the way here in my backyard and there are some other videos on there from other YouTubers that I've put on that playlist because I think they're worthy of your time. So go take, take a look at that and get growing. Hey, we'll talk to you later. Happy gardening. See you next time. Bye-bye.